is the the light builds up in little spots, or we perceive them as little spots, and and those those dots uh, eventually make an image. Okay, this is they're taking this as further evidence that uh, photons behave as as particles. Uh, you might have seen the uh, there's a, a who's anybody doing art here? Who's heard of pointillism? You might have seen, if anybody's ever seen uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, you'll recognise this picture. Uh, this, this, uh, this image here is basically, the artist has, has made it with a, a, a series, a large series of dots. And uh, if, you, if you zoom in close enough, you would just see that they are dots. If you zoom out, well, yeah... Um, I don't know whether it's going to make much difference. Yeah, it might, might, we might get to the point where we're just looking at pixels. But take my word for it, um, this picture is is made with a series of dots. Um, it's probably going out of focus <laughs> uh, a lot. That's my guess, yeah. So... So multiple dots may eventually makes an image if they're in the right uh, sequence, of course. And you might have seen those, if you've ever been very close to a very big billboard, very large canvases, um, the, uh, from a distance it looks like an image like this, but if you go up really close, you see that they're actually made of, uh, they're lots of little dots. And, and that essentially saves on printing. You're saving a whole lot of ink or plastic or vinyl or whatever it is that they make them with. So it's not necessary on a billboard that's uh, two stories up in the air for it to be very, very sharp. It, it's only, people are only going to be looking at it from a distance, so it doesn't matter. I'm getting sidetracked here, though. There's a couple of formulae. Well, this, I'll better say something about what I just said. We have been looking... at light as a wave. Light as a wave shows interference effects, of course. Um, we now look at it as a particle. And we, we call this the, the wave particle duality of light. And it, it's not really a particle, as I said before. It's a, it's a packet of energy. Uh, don't think of it as a little, uh, uh, little, little piece of light. In fact, it's, it's not anything at all... Uh, until we put it, until it actually lands on something, so to speak. Okay, if you, uh, I think I've said before, if you, uh, if you shine a torch into space, uh, or if you sh shine a torch anywhere where there is no matter at all for the light to bounce off of, you don't see the light at all. Okay, it's just energy travelling through whatever medium it's travelling through. Um, there's a couple of formula you need to know. Energy is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. This is Planck's constant. Uh, after Max Planck. Uh, it's equal to 6.63 by 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. And this formula as well. Momentum is equal to Planck's constant on lambda, or the wavelength. And these will help you to answer the next question. Um. <clears throat> so 
So we, we're asked here to do a calculation uh, to find the energy in joules and EV of a photon of wavelength 540 nanometers. Uh, if, sorry, 540 nanometers. And find the momentum as well. Okay. The jokes are funniest when I didn't mean them, aren't they? Have a go at that, please. <laughs> You'll also need C equals F lambda. So C equals F lambda becomes becomes uh, frequency equals C on lambda, which equals. 3 by 10 to the 8 meters per second over 540 by 10 to the minus 9 meters, which equals 5.56 by 10 to the 14 hertz. Uh, hertz. Oh, yeah, it is. It's frequency, isn't it? Hertz. Now we know the frequency, of course, we can use E equals Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Planck's constant times 5.56 by 10 to the 14. Three point six eight times ten to the minus nineteen joules. So we've calculated in joules. Now we need to go to electron volts. Can anybody remember how we do that? I okay, yeah. I didn't understand a word anybody said, but I imagine you were saying divide by the electron charge. One point six by ten to the minus nineteen. Okay, we'll, we'll yield, and that's in EV then, we'll yield 2.3 electron volts. Good. Uh, and momentum. Uh, I'll just go across here, so we'll use this space here. Momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. I'll just mix it up a bit, 5.4 by 10 to the minus 7. Uh, oh, I covered up my answer. Has anybody got an answer for this one? 1.23 times 10. Yes, it's sec newtons because we're looking at a momentum, aren't we? Now... You might notice also something about this number here. What, what's, what's with that number? It's very small, isn't it? We're talking about a photon momentum, and, uh, and it is very, very small for a single photon of wavelength 540 nanometers. I'll remind you... Any questions about... No, good. Oh, Shh, please, boys. Seconds to the power of minus one, yes. One on seconds, yeah. So this one here could be or one on the seconds or one on seconds, inverse of seconds. Okay, yes, that's true. Uh, okay, I'll just remind you again, we've looked at this already, just remind you again what we're talking about here, this is the electromagnetic spectrum as we know it, um, there may be other frequencies or wavelengths, uh, but we don't have the devices to be able to measure them, so, um, but this is what we can measure, uh oh, that's oh, alright, alright. 
sometimes I press some button and everything goes haywire. Um, okay. So we're looking here at the electromagnetic spectrum. You'll notice that um, as I move across this way, we're moving through radio waves, microwaves, infrared. There's the visible spectrum right there. This is not to scale. That's tiny compared to the rest of the spectrum. Um, so keep moving right. Frequency is increasing. The frequency is increasing, and therefore what's increasing? Energy is increasing by E equals HF, isn't it? So if we know frequency increasing, therefore by E equals HF, energy increasing. That's that way. What's going on with the uh, wavelength as we move from left to right? Decreasing, thank you. Decreasing as we go this way. Uh, that's all you need to know about that. Is anybody copying that diagram at all? Copying some details from that diagram? No, okay. It's, um, well, you should have seen it a few times before. I'm just, it's in the textbook anyway. Yeah, you'd probably be wasting your time drawing it. Some people like to be holistic with their notes, that's all. Um, I'm going to talk about photons and I'm going to draw them like this. I'm going to say this is the path of a photon as it's incident on something. I might even draw a little particle. When in fact it's actually, uh, it's actually, think of it like this every time. A parcel. Okay. It's a, a pho photons are packets. That's my best idea of packet of energy. That's how I always pick it, picture them. Packets of energy. And uh, this might be uh, low frequency. And I might draw high frequency. I might say, well, this one is actually really high frequency. Okay. And I, I know it's just, that's just me drawing silly squiggles, but relative to each other, you can see that this is low frequency and that's high frequency, that's all. The photo electric effect. Einstein got his Nobel Prize for this. Uh, contrary to popular belief that he got it for relativity. Um, and in fact, this was discovered before. Um, Einstein just managed to describe it and use it to... Uh, uh, we, he, he was very good at theoretical physics. And sh so uh, effects and... and and phenomena that people had observed in the laboratories and couldn't describe, Einstein managed to come up with the mathematics and the physics that described it. And so he was given a lot of the accolade for that reason. He's, uh, he was very humble in it, and I, I reckon uh, he said there was a line where he said, uh, if, um, if, I appear to be, um, if I appear to be amazing or something like that, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. Talking about Max Planck and... Uh, uh, Newton and that sort of thing. Yeah, Einstein. Um, my, one of my lecturers at university actually said that um, he thought Einstein was a sham and that um, uh, that basically he was really good at being the crazy, crazy, hairy guy uh, that was really good at writing papers and that's all. Uh, everybody else was, everybody that came up with the ideas that 
Einstein had sort of put together really well um, were introverted and kept to themselves and so weren't very good at selling themselves as scientists. Thank you. All right. um, so, but I don't think that's true. I've heard m much evidence to the contrary that he was a very good theori theoretical physicist and I think he has been um, he certainly has been uh, credited with the the idea of the theory of relativity, which is uh, which is one of the most amazing findings in uh, in uh, the last two hundred years, I think. Um, photoelectric effect. I've just drawn a metal surface here. I was talking while I was drawing something. Metal surface. That's this here. Could, could be could be any metal. And I've got, a, I've got a photon coming in, incident on that metal surface, photon. Um, if that photon has sufficient frequency, it has sufficient energy, depending on the, metal, the type of metal we're talking about or, or substance, an electron will be emitted. And as long as it's got sufficient frequency, an electron will be emitted. I should have put the emphasis on the will. The minimum frequency is called the threshold frequency. Uh, we say F sub naught is an insignia for threshold frequency. Uh, has a value depending on the material. So it's different for different metals. If a photon has the threshold frequency minimum, then an electron will be emitted. Yes. It's exactly how solar panels work. Uh, I think in most solar panels these days, the surface is uh, not the surface that you can touch, that's a plastic coating over the top. The surface that looks like blue, shiny metal is silicon, I believe. Mm. Um, silicon just happens to be that material that's just the right cheapness or value economic value compared to how efficient it is at because uh, of course for a solar panel to be the best for your roof you want it to have a really low fo don't you if threshold frequency the lower the threshold frequency the more of that sunlight is going to make it eject electrons so i think uh silicon is that is that substance uh, well last last i looked they were using silicon but they're they're working on increasing the efficiency of uh, solar panels all the time. And I think the Chinese are, uh, are front runners, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm quoting things that I, well, I'm, I'm saying things that I don't know a whole lot about, to tell you the truth. Mm. Absolutely, yeah, that's right. Exactly the same effect, yeah, it is light, it's packets of energy has the minimum threshold, then an electron will be ejected. The electron will have exceptional energy, you'll show. Oh, I'll show in a second, though. Uh, and I don't know what the consequences of that are for these, for these, uh, uh, for solar panels on your roof. If you just irradiated it with gamma radiation, where, how efficient it would be, I'm not sure. Because they're designed to, they're designed to catch electrons from ultraviolet light. 
and that sort of thing, okay? Threshold frequency is the minimum frequency required to, an eject, to eject an electron from the metal surface. I'll explain that. Get it, get it. I, yeah, you, you asked me a couple of questions, but I'm about to explain, so I'll just wait till I get there. All right, Keem, yep. Um, there's a few things about the photoelectric effect. The The intensity of the light uh, and one of the students in the other class said, what about photon density? That's okay. How many, how many photons per unit area there are? That could be described as the intensity of the light. Affects the number of electrons emitted. Um, intensity. does not affect energy. So essentially you can turn the light up, you can shine more of a certain frequency on, but it's not going to change the energy of the electrons emitted. Okay? When I say energy of electrons, I mean the speed. Just more will come out, that's right, exactly. Uh, electrons will have a range of kinetic energies uh, the Kinetic energy of a photon, of an electron, sorry, is dependent upon the frequency. When I say the frequency, I mean the frequency of the incident light. The higher the frequency, the greater the energy of the electrons emitted. Uh, and that could be explained by this incorrect diagram. This is a, you've been seeing this uh, model of the atom for a long time. Uh, it's not right. Uh, now, so we know, we all know that there's different energy levels in, in atoms and we've described them for years as being the electrons in some path around the nucleus of the atom. That's fine, that's sufficient for what, it's a good, uh, it's a good, it's a good way of picturing what we're trying to show. Essentially, it's like an electron cloud, it's, um, we can we draw we render these best we draw these best at the moment in with 3D images uh, that show the energy uh, the probability that an electron's going to occupy a space and therefore the energy of that space and uh, so uh, so this is not right but if I shine light on this atom what what happens to it? Gets excited, doesn't it? Doesn't matter what the light. If that if that light has sufficient frequency, so it might be the threshold frequency or or greater than the threshold frequency, greater than or equal to the threshold frequency, then what what's going to happen is it's going to be sufficient to allow an electron 
to leave? Why did I draw the electron on the outer part of the shell? Because it requires the, the least amount of energy to remove it from the, from the atom. These ones in here are bound quite strongly. Okay, All those chemists in here will know that most of the chemistry that occurs, uh, interactions between molecules and atoms, is, is in the valence shell. Okay, So, uh, so th this electron is now free. If, if well, one of those electrons, those outer shell electrons, is now free because of this minimum threshold frequency light incident. If I were to draw a graph, draw a graph in green, and I said that uh, I graphed the kinetic energy on the y-axis and the frequency on the x-axis. Does anybody can see straight away from what I've been describing? This isn't easy unless you've looked at your textbook, of course. But um, what sort of how would it, how would the graph appear? Linear. Thank you. Why linear? Because E equals H F. So yeah, the kinetic energy is proportional to the frequency and that that's easy enough isn't it there's something wrong with this though it's actually uh oh uh there we go i can a, i can actually shift it I'll, I'll shift it here that's that's more true now and i'll just continue that graph on I don't know whether that's a straight line or not. Reasonably straight. It's going to look something like that. Now, why? What's the significance of this point here? Uh, the work, somebody's read on. It's the work function. It's the threshold frequency of the of the metal. Very good. That's right. Work function of the metal. So the work function's down down here. So we work function is related to the energy and so this is the threshold frequency uh, as the thresh as we meet the threshold frequency there's a linear relationship between the energy of the emitted electrons and the frequency of the incident light and so we show that as a line um, we're going to go below the graph and we'll talk about that later but you can see here that that's the threshold frequency that's the point at which electrons start to have energy as they leave now that might be metal i'll call it metal a is that graph what if i had a metal b that was completely different how how would the graph of metal b look left or right could be anywhere that's very very descriptive that's good if i were to draw another metal it would look like this. Notice how they have the same slope. They have different they have different threshold threshold frequencies. Metal B. Metal B. Now do you see why they have the same slope? Because E equals HF again. What's that? Yeah, the slope is H, isn't it? Yeah, slope is Planck's constant. Have you read on, Anthony, or uh, you knew that you've just worked this out? A little bit. That's very good. Yeah, so Anthony's pointed out that the, the slope is always going to be Planck's constant in this graph, which is very good by this E equals HF. Okay. Can you see it now? Y equals MX. Okay, so that's good. Yes. Investigating the photoelectric effect.
Now, I drew, oh, actually, no, I haven't shown you this. Uh, I'll, I'll draw this in a second. I'll show you the applet now. And I, so, Here, uh, now, I'd better um, congratulate FET on this uh, PHET, uh, FET simulations on uh, this applet, because I am recording this, and so some people might see this, might get upset. Thank you, FET. Uh, this, <laughs> this, uh, this applet you guys will use to do your practical. It's just a simulated practical. It's, uh, it's, it's quite, a, quite a good practical. Um, what we have here is we have a, a light and that light, I, with that light, I can I can vary the frequency or vary the wavelength rather, the the values in in nanometers. Okay, I can vary the intensity as well, and you'll notice I can turn that up to 100%. It doesn't matter, no matter how intense that light is, if it's not reaching this minimum frequency, then no electrons will be emitted, like you were seeing before. Uh, so that's our metal surface there. I'll just turn down the light so that you can see the metal surface a bit better. Okay, so that, that grey stuff. Behind it is an electrode which is connected to a potential difference. Uh, there's, a, there's an ammeter running in series through it and on the other side is another electrode. Now, if I increase the frequency, I'm reducing the wavelength, increasing the frequency. At some point, I will have reached the threshold frequency and electrons will start to be emitted. You'll notice at the moment that those electrons, because I'm very close to the threshold frequency, I don't know what it is. When you guys are manipulating this, you'll have to do this. 527 will go, we increase, we increase the wavelength, decrease the frequency. So if we go there, what's going to happen? Nothing. Yeah, okay, so 5.11. Okay, so decreasing the wavelength, increasing the frequency. You notice that they all have, is it the same energies? No, they don't. Okay, now these three have the same energies. What happens if I turn up the, uh, the frequency you will notice that there are electrons being emitted with many different energies. Why is that? Why are they different speeds? Come back um, here to this here. Just a, just a conceptual idea on what's going on there. Yeah, essentially what, what an atom is, is an atom is just made up of a nucleus and an electron cloud. That electron cloud has a bunch of electrons in it, depending on, the, on the, what substance it is, but we're talking about metals. And remember that there are going to be many different energies of electron in there. Metals have a lot of electrons around them. Uh, if I shine on, shine, or uh, if I have incident light on that atom, of minimum threshold frequency, and in fact, much greater than the threshold frequency, then different um, photons, uh, or sorry, the photons are all gonna have sufficient energy to eject the least energetic electrons, but also some of the more energetic electrons. And uh, imagine though, just think about this, please. Think about this, all of those frequencies come into this atom and all they do is eject that one electron, that same energy electron. What's going to happen? If that, if that's just minimum threshold frequency and it, it's it's lots of different wavelengths or frequencies, what's going to happen when those frequencies, those different frequencies, strike that same electron? Will the electrons... Oh, Ryan? Um, when the electrons begin to spread out, would the other atoms that are on top of the electrons spread out, 
Yes, yep. We only look at the very simple situation where we have a single photon going in on a single atom. And uh, yes, they all... That, yeah, you, the energy that's going on in a surface of a metal is way too complicated for even the most powerful computer to be able to simulate. And so we, we just look at the simple idea. When you get to university and you do statistical mechanics, then you can look at that sort of thing. Yeah, okay, so um, this... Essentially, if I was shining lots of different wavelengths of light onto this atom or this one electron, uh, then what's going to happen is it's going to leave this atom with lots of different energies also by the conservation of energy. Okay. So, uh, something also, um, so I've, I've, got, I've got lots of, uh, I've got minimum intensity. Oh, sorry, I've got, yeah, I've got minimum intensity there. If I increase the intensity, of course, I just get more electrons. If then you'll notice there's a current happening here, because what's happening is they're leaving, the electrons are leaving this surface and they're traveling to this surface and there's a, there's a current occurring through this. Okay, we have, a, we have a completed circuit. What if I reduce this voltage? <clears throat> now, what's going on there? Here I've got an electron gun. Here, if I go past zero, and, and so this is more negative now. If I, if I find just the right spot, and that's hard to do, you have to type these numbers in here as well. Only the most ele energetic electrons will get across there. And it doesn't look like any are getting across there now. We have a current. Now, what if I t increase the frequency, then, yeah, okay. They're much more energetic. Oh. Oh, do you want to? Oh, eight volts, right? Yeah. Oh, you want to go real far? Oh, you break the simulator. <laughs> okay. So this is the this is the simulator that you'll use for the practical. Uh, What is it? What? Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Well, actually, this this applet does have a couple of idiosyncrasies that uh, you'll work out. One of them is you'll notice if I if I got this voltage just right, so that they're just making it or they're just not making it, sometimes we still get a current. Uh, yes. Yeah, there are. But if you if you choose to go with either the current reading, look, see, we've got a current, but oh, hang on, there are some making it. No current, but there's still electrons arriving. Okay, so the simulator's not perfect. Hang on, are they making it now? Oh, maybe. I'll, no, it was just. Okay, so, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, they're making it. Okay, so some students had noticed that some of these, there's still a current there, 351. 352. When you get to 353, 353, we've still got a current, but it doesn't look like they're making it. Okay, so you've got to choose one. You say, will I go with the current reading or will I go with seeing the electrons actually arrive with the, on the plate? Okay, so maybe go with the current reading. It's up, it's up to you, though. You, you choose. 
Um, we can change the metal here to different metals. Copper. <laughs> okay, thank you.